shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the story by Max Roma. Sir Graham Guthrie, British resident of Bhutan, on leave in London, against Dr. Fu Manchu, Nalun Smith and Dr. Petrie are trapped by the agents of the wily Dr. Fu. Imprisoned in a cellar room, they're awaiting torture when Karame, the Eurasian slave, appears through a concealed trap in the floor and releases them from their chains. Blindfolding them, he leads the way through dank underground passageways and rooms toward freedom. When suddenly their escape is interrupted, by the approaching sound of the low beat of a muffled drum. The drums of fever, Petrie. They're coming directly toward us down this passage. We'll have to go back. No, no, quickly. This way. There is one chance. The door. Inside, quickly. Make no sound on your line. You think should open this door? Quiet now. They come. Thank heaven they have passed. He comes for you. Take you to his chamber of horrors. Quiet and follow me. He doesn't suspect you, Cadamy. If he did, Mayan Smith, I would die. Suddenly. And very horribly, no doubt. When can we take off these handkerchiefs? Not yet. Only a moment more. I say, if not for your own, you are still in grave danger. This is a fantastic dream, man. Yes. Blindfolded, a silent escape from a river, with a girl who might well have stepped out of the cages of the Arabian night. An oriental adventure brought to England. England? <laughs> no, such things cannot happen in England. Police, they are helpless against him. 
Remember, until the clock strikes. Her secret, Peter. Why does she cling to that monster? Heaven knows. Ah, oh, thank goodness we can take these off now. Look, where the devil are we, Nathan? Towing path on the Thames. Look over there. The moon shining on towers and battlements. Why, it's Windsor County. Ten o'clock. Two and a half hours to save the grave. Well, let's run for it. We we may catch a train. Come on. Station at 11.51. Just 30 minutes left to get to the other side of the river and reach his hotel. Neyland, what was that wailing we heard? And what did Fu Manchu mean when he referred to Rangoon? I noticed how it affected you. Oh, there was a ghastly business there in 1908. An utterly mysterious epidemic. And that awful wailing was associated with it. In what way? What do you mean by an epidemic? It began at the Palace Mansions Hotel in the cantonment. A young American was staying there. One night he went to his room, locked the door, and jumped out of his window. Broke his neck, of course. Suicide? Apparently. But there were unusual features in the case. For instance, his revolver lay beside him, fully loaded. In the courtyard? Yes. But was it murder by any chance? There were no clues pointing to murder. At the time, his door was found locked on the inside. It had to be broken open. But this wailing business... That developed later. It was only noticed later. A French doctor named Lafitte died in exactly the same way at the same hotel. Though he occupied a different room. Now, here's the extraordinary part of the affair. A friend shared the room with him and actually saw him do it. Saw him leap from the window? Yes. The friend, an Englishman named Martin, was aroused by the wailing. I was in Rangoon at the time, so I know more of Lafitte's case than the young American. I spoke to Martin personally. And he told me the cry seemed to come from above. Well, it seemed to come from above when we heard that two men shoot house tonight. Martin said it was a clear, moonlit night. He saw Lafitte at the window, saw him look out. Suddenly, with a scream, he threw himself forward. Crashed head first into the courtyard below. And what then? Martin ran to the window and looked down. Lafitte's scream had aroused the place of court, but there was absolutely nothing to account for the occurrence. A balcony? A ledge by which anyone could reach the window? Nothing. But how did you recognize the cry? I stopped at the palace mansion for some time. And one night, this some canny howling aroused me. I heard it quite distinctly. I never liked it to forget it. But what happened? It was followed by a hoarse yell. The man in the next room, an orchid hunter, had gone the same way. Fortunately for the reputation of the hotel, several similar cases happened elsewhere. In Rangoon, Moon Mine. They were all alike. Exactly. In every detail. The story got out and was fostered by some fake here that the god of fever was reborn. The cry was his call for victims. So it was a ghastly business. Yes. And one which led to an outbreak among the Dacoits. It gave the district superintendent no end of trouble. Was there anything unusual about the body? Yes. They all developed marks after death as though they'd been strangled. These marks possessed a peculiar form. It was said to be the five heads of fever. The deaths were confined to Europeans. Oh, by no means. Several Burmese and others died in the same way. The call of fever became a nightmare in Rangoon. It's a new agent of death, Peter. Something born in a plague spot of Burma. The home of the inexplicable. Then heaven help for Graham Guthrie. A few minutes, Peter. We can get to Graham's room through the rear entrance to the hotel without being seen. Just a moment there. Hold on. Where do you think you're going? We have to get to the lobby without being seen from the front entrance. Lead the way, please. Ah, like that, is it? Well, now you'll get out the same way you came in through the rear entrance. Lively now. I'm the hotel detective. If you are, look at this. Oh. oh excuse me, Inspector. I didn't know. I'm William, sir. Take us to the Graham Guthrie's room at once. This way, sir. The freight list will take us to his floor. Right. Right here, Inspector. in his room? He's been there all evening, sir. Anything suspicious about the hotel tonight? Well, I mean, now that you mention it, I uh, merely a sense, if you will, of something wrong, but something in the air that didn't feel right. But nothing could happen in this hotel. I understand. That's why we found you in the basement, eh? You were giving the place a going over. Right, old Jim. My usual post is in the lobby. I suppose I should have stayed there. Oh, here we are, Inspector. The Graham's door. Well, well, what is it? Open the door, Sir Graham. It's important. Well, well, well what do you want? My credentials, sir. Oh, Williams, stay here where you can watch the lift and the stairs. Oh, oh 
Police. Wait, wait, wait. Come in, gentlemen. Thank you. Switch off the lights, secretly. Close the door and lock it. Uh, what's all this? No time for ceremony or explanation, sir. In a moment, the clock will strike half past twelve. At exactly that time, an attempt will be made on your life. Oh, on my life? Here at the top of the Savoy? That fact strengthens the danger to Graham. Do you recall the mysterious epidemic which broke out in 1908 in Rangoon and the death due to the call of... Great Scott, what, what is that? The call of fever to Graham, calling for you. For me? The epidemic in Rangoon... They were strange deaths, but they were suicides, Inspector Smith. No, they were murders. I know, but in every instance, the victims threw themselves in the windows of locked rooms. And those windows were quite inaccessible. And the conditions are identical. Quiet now, please. And be prepared for anything. Thanks, Naylor. I feel that peculiar sense of impending danger which invariably precedes a visit from Fu Manchu. Like the presence of death. That's uncanny. Quiet. There it is. Nothing human can reach that window. Shh, don't move, Sir Graham. Remain where you are, sir. I'm going to open the window. Come here, Petrie. Not too close. Get a tight hold of my feet. And don't let go. Now, be careful, Naylor. I'm no child. Miss, let me help. Then help Petrie. I'm going to lean out and see what it is. Petrie! Hold on! Hold tight, Sir Graham! I've got him! He's going! Ah! <laughs> 